your source for all things Texas Tech. This is the Ask Level Podcast from Double T 97.3. Hey, what's happening? Welcome into another episode of Ask Level Podcast, episode number 43. We've been uh, in and out a little bit this summer, creeping up on football season, starting to get more news for basketball, those sorts of things. Just coming off of a week with the uh, Air Raiders that ended a little shorter than uh, some people wanted, but we'll get Level's uh, experience take on that, as he called the games on the radio. Level, how are we doing, man? I'm doing good. Yeah, we are just under six weeks away from uh, the Red Raiders uh, football opener. You and I will be in uh, Fort Collins slash Laramie, Wyoming Yeah, uh, in about six weeks-ish. So I guess technically six weeks from now, we'll already know if the Red Raiders are 0-1, 1-0. We'll be breaking it down and uh, talking about that Oregon game. So it is, uh, yeah, summer is slowly dwindling, uh, which is kind of, I get to this point and I'm kind of like, okay, let's go. Let's get there. You know, yeah. But but you still got still got a ways to go. But yeah, uh, hopefully, I think you've got some time off and I've got some time off, much needed. Kind of recharging the old batteries a little bit, and uh, uh, but we're about to be back off to the races. No doubt. Uh, since we've last talked, Big 12 Media Days came yes. and went. Um, anything that stood out there for you, your mark, tech, otherwise, or was it just kind of business as usual? Well, it's always one of those necessary uh, things on the calendar. I think uh, some people like really pay close attention to it, parse every word. And then others kind of just take it for what it is. It's talking season. Mm -hmm. I, I think that the the tech part of it that I was I don't know, a, a takeaway that I had it was a couple of things. One, I think that you know Joey and his group were asked about some uh, you know expectations, and right. I think that there was two parts of that which I, I kind of were my main takeaways from, from the Red Raider contingent. Part one was Joey kind of said, yeah, this is what keeps me up at night is making sure that we are staying, you know, staying in the moment. Um, he mentioned the countdown clock that they have in the locker room, which is not counting down to Wyoming or Oregon or whatever other game it's counting down to the first day of, of, of fall camp. Mm-hmm. And, and he's just like, you know, trying to push every button to make sure that they stay, you know, th that everything stays right and that they stay, you know, th but the, he's like that, these are the kinds of things that I, I worry about, uh, the, the, the external person out there, whether it be, you know, broadcaster in our cases or, or fan or, you know, just whoever, they don't worry about those kinds of things. That's what specifically what Joey, cause he kind of said it. And then the other thing was that they didn't back down from any of this talk. Sure. They kind of embraced it and were like, yeah, well, I think we're going to be pretty good. You know, like, what about, what about it? <laughs> you know? And, yeah. I, and I thought that was, uh, that was good too. Yeah. Uh, I, I, the, I, I, yeah. Go ahead. I was just say like, that that's kind of the vibe I got is that, I mean, he's a guy that, that would absolutely embrace that kind of thing and you would expect that, but um, it's not overly confident, but it is, quietly confident i guess for for him and the players that were at media days it seemed to to give off that kind of vibe yeah i, th I think he knows he's got uh, an old team a d mm -hmm. team uh, and and i think you know he 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 likes his he likes his guys you know so and, and again most coaches do you know i i heard i heard sonny dykes talking about you know, hey, I mean, we've got a better wide receiver room than we did last year, and we lost Quentin Johnston, who was a a top pick. Um, you know, Gus Malzahn, you know, talked and and really likes, and and I think one of the most impressive guys that came out of media days was John Reese Pumley, his quarterback. That's a stud baseball player as well. Mm -hmm. I think this is a very impressive guy, and Gus Malzahn is as accomplished as any head coach in this league, and uh, you know, so. You know, and, and and the newcomers all talked about needing to address depth and some felt like that they are, you know, well on the way and others feel like, yeah, we got we got a little work to do to, to create some depth on our team because that's the difference between the league that we've been playing in and the league that we're about, now about to join. So, uh, 
Yeah, th- those were my main, I guess, takeaways. And then obviously, Brett, your mark kind of, and so much has happened really since Big 12 Media Days. And now that we've had sure. Pac-12 Media Day uh, <laughs> since then. But yeah. um, the, uh, the 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 barbs are, because I, I think your mark has rubbed some the wrong way. I hear uh, I hear Greg Sankey kind of take a few subtle shots at Brett, your mark uh with, with his sec media day address uh, as it related to to tv and to content and days of the week i've i've heard uh, obviously george klevkov kind of you know like kind of do the shoulder you know wipe <laughs> off the shoulder like yeah, i'm not worried about i'm not worried about the old big 12 and i'm not worried about losing anybody you know so who knows uh we'll, we'll all find out the truth at some point some point wow. hopefully that about points. yeah about realignment round two or if it's if it's over and I, and I will say along those lines San Diego State who we have talked about some mm-hmm. in this space San Diego State appears now they are at least a semi long-term member again of the Mountain West uh, I, I think that everybody feels like now it's it's easily for the next two years and then you start to read quite a bit the Pac-12 is not they're not interested in adding anybody right now. So I don't know. It, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting, but yeah, here's the San Diego state kind of locked into the uh, mountain West for the next couple of years, at least. So uh, that, that happened, of course, air Raiders pretty fresh on the mind. You, you got the opportunity to call these games uh, of guys that uh, you have fond memories with um, a, a lot of these guys and, and different errors for Texas tech. The way they put this team together was really cool. Uh, they, Clark Lambert and Andrew Sorrells were very in on making sure that it's all Red Raiders this time. It's not a, a mixture. So you got um, th- this nostalgia thing that's going with the fans. Obviously, it didn't end like you wanted. But what was the uh, what was the experience like? You know, so I, I I've known about the TBT for a, a bit. I, I had no idea this was its tenth year. Mm-hmm. Okay, I did not yeah. realize it had been around for a Same decade. Here. Because it has grown, uh, mm-hmm. I think there was some vision back in the day with this thing, and I think it's it's kind of just started to grow and catch on, and it's got a TV contract and all these things. So I didn't really grasp what it what it was or what it is uh, based on, I guess, what I thought it was, and then based on seeing it up close in person. I I, I think I now have a feel uh, a full grasp of of this deal, and it's it's pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think the Texas Tech folks kind of started to get on board with it maybe two years ago, and then and then really a lot last year. But it was really last year that they kind of wanted to take the next step and and kind of make some changes to the roster, get a general manager, yeah. which is what the TBT calls these folks that kind of organize these teams, which is Andrew Sorrells and, and Clark Lambert, and then and then host it and. So I knew this was all coming, and you mentioned, yeah, that, that Haxton and I got to broadcast these games, and and I just I, I saw the team that Tech put together. I was like, this is a pretty good bunch here. There's some legit dudes. Well, so uh, you know, I'll talk about the event more in a second, but I, it was really fun for me as being around some of these guys much earlier in the week. Yeah, uh, I guess it was a week ago. You know, last weekend, uh, depending on when you're listening to us, it still would have been like last weekend. I went to, you know, and watch these guys practice and, and things like that. And I hadn't seen John Robertson in a long time. I hadn't seen Jordan Tolbert in a long time. And it was yeah. great to see those guys, you know, Jordan left here and, and spent his last year at SMU. Uh, I had seen Kyler back at the, at the tech spring game with Norrence. And so I'd seen him recently, but it was nice to see him back in a, a tech situation because mm-hmm. he'd left for now granted he may have made a smart move based on what we know now um yeah you know what like, hard you know, I mean, yeah that's right that's right uh but uh i uh i i just liked the 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 mindset of of getting everybody together it was this giant homecoming yeah and you could have put a team a oh, really man. good team <laughs> together with the people that were around and and not playing absolutely and because last uh, Wednesday, first of all, I watched Jarrett Culver run up and down with these guys a bit. And, you know, they'd asked him to play. His agent just didn't feel like it was the, the best thing for him right this second. Didn't want him to get dinged up and, and whatnot. But 
Uh, I, I, you know, last Wednesday at that first game, you know, and help me if I forget somebody, but you obviously had Norris was around. Keenan Evans was around all week. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jarrett Culver was there. Zaire Smith was there. Uh, even guys like Robert Lewandowski that played for, um, you know, Bob Knight were there. Jay Crockett was there. Mm -hmm. Adonis arms was there. Uh, Aaron Ross was there. Uh, you know, uh, and then, and then I don't know if you noticed him. The other night, because I don't think many people did, and it was weird to me. And I swear I stared at him for a half. Oh, yeah. I do you know who I'm talking about? Darren Shannon. Yes. Yeah, I saw him after the game. I'm like, Yeah, he was in the wasn't front expecting row. That at all. Yeah. He was in the front row, and and I I'm I'm like, I I you know, I just my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. Uh, but I, I was like, I, that's, you know, and I'm like, okay, I need him to stand up. I need him to kind of look directly my way. Yeah. And so, but he wasn't over there after the game was over signing autographs and, and all those things. And I don't know if he just missed that or just, I, I don't know because Mooney and Moro and everybody was, was just, you know, a lot of fans and kids wanting to take pictures with these guys and understandably so Zach Smith and on and on it went. And uh, I, I see Terrence out in the parking lot, and he's like, what's up, man? And I'm like, I thought that was you. And I said, you need to be playing in this deal whenever the time is right. And he's like, I absolutely will. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I, I like that uh, as good as anything, regardless of the actual event. I like it that it brought everybody back together. Yeah. And what we haven't talked about is, is that I think it, it really helped Grant McCaslin a, a lot because – Sure. There's nothing they could have done. They could have begged and pleaded for a homecoming. And we've, we, you know, we're going to do this for you and honor you here to get everybody schedule kind of cooperated than, than this deal. And, and be, to watch, you know, some of their guys play and, and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. But I just, uh, so th this event, I, I get the sneaking suspicion this event will be back in Lubbock, uh, maybe an annual deal, kind of like they they have a, a deal in Wichita, I would think Kansas so. every yeah. summer, and and I think that you know the the roster of players will continue to improve. The eleven players that were on that team will get the first right to say, yeah, we want to we want to do this again, we want to come back, but as guys drop off or age out or whatever, th there are plenty. Of, of choices uh, to choose from Brandon Francis would have played mm -hmm. uh, on this, on this team, but he was playing for a, I guess a league championship based on uh, the league that he's in professionally. And, and they did win it by the way. Was so it, he, he it, was it Indonesia, something like that. Yeah, maybe, maybe yeah. so. I think yeah. Keenan Evans would have played on this team, but he was coming off of an Achilles injury that happened back in January, but he's about a month away from the doctor going, yeah, man, you're good to go. But these are legit guys, man. Mm -hmm. oh, these absolutely. are legit. Uh, yeah, these are legit players, and so not to mention the Zaires and the Culvers, and and on and on it goes. But but in, in Terrence Shannon. Um, so anyway, I, I I was pleased about back on the same page mindset. Uh, I just I thought that was good because they're all they all played good ball here. They all gave us a lot of good memories. Sure. But it's just. Not a lot of guys stay put for, you know, John Robertson is a bit of a unicorn these days. Jay Crockett, same thing. Yeah. Now the rules have changed, but those guys were, and that's why we all have such fond memories of them because we grew up with them. I mean, they, they, we watched them grow up, uh, you know, they were here for four years and, and very productive. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people loved it. Anybody that got to come out. Obviously, the result of the uh, the New Mexico the enchantment game not what you wanted, but just <laughs> like just like the real tournament, just like the big dance, you run into one team that can't miss a shot, and that's exactly what can happen. Well, and, and the, this is this is professional. The, these are professional games that you're out there watching. If you, if yeah. you went to any of the event, the, the, these are pros. The, 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 this is not somebody that is. You know, there's no college age guys. They're, 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 this is these are professionals, and, and in most cases, these are guys that are playing overseas professionally, or in, and in other cases, big dollars. Yeah. Um, You know, it, it's it's a good living. Now you've got to go live in Turkey or Italy or Greece or, you know, Japan. I mean, Jay Crock is playing in Japan next year. Um, it, you know, talking to him, but you know, so but these are professionals. These are legit basketball players. And every team is put together differently. Like there's these alumni teams, which they felt like, okay, this is the best way to tap into this deal. 
let's make this all strictly Texas Tech players, former ones that played for Texas Tech. Others are just kind of put a group together and they play for a cause. Um, the New Mexico thing was was that, but they also were, it was mainly about if you either played at New Mexico or you were from New Mexico, they kind of put that thing together. And then you got an NBA first round draft pick over there and Kenny Thomas has spent 12 years in the NBA coaching them. So I mean, there's legit people involved in, in this deal. Dwayne Coswell coached against you yeah. in the first game, the Purple Hearts. So he was a longtime NBA guy and his son was obviously playing for, for this sure. deal. So uh, th- these are pros. And when you're dealing with professionals, sometimes the mindset's a bit different for some than it is the others. Uh, I, th- I think uh, the Bamforth kid for – uh, the enchanted team for New Mexico. He he's 32 years old. Mm. He did not play professionally this last year, but guess what? His sense of urgency was an all time high, <laughs> and he he's trying yeah. to get his next contract or get yeah, a chance is. to to play. But yeah, That's 16 of 24 from three. Wow. Yeah, six, 16 to 24 from three. 66 percent from behind that, the arc, and that the dipped enchanted. a lot after the first half too. Correct. Yeah, I mean, at one point they were 81 percent, but oh. they just. They just shot you out of your own building. I mean, it was just, it was an avalanche. You were down 30. I mean, so. Yeah. One one last thing on the air, Raiders. I just didn't know. And I don't know if you felt the same way or if other fans felt the same way. I didn't know I was going to care as much as I did. Like I knew I was going to want the air Raiders to win, but I was, I was invested in, um, uh, you know, when you get down by a lot, it was, it was hurting, but it's not quite the same level as a Texas tech basketball game, but it was, it was there because there is a face to it. You're not just rooting for a jersey and Chandra Jones. No offense to him, but him playing for you. It's these are guys you uh, have grown to love over years. So it was didn't know I was going to be that invested in it. But um, switching to basketball, current basketball, Texas Tech hoops. We get a Big Twelve Matrix released um, this past week level, which isn't the actual schedule itself, but it tells you who you're going to play twice, who you'll be on the road only against, who you'll be at home only against. What was your initial reaction to what you saw with this? No trips to Kansas, the state of. Yeah. That's the first thing I noticed. Love it, right? I mean, it's just, that's fantastic. Yeah, and and, and the, (laughs) yeah, I mean, I I don't hate it. Uh, I I think, I think, depending on people's view of it, they'd be like, oh man, I I love going up there. I mean, you get get the chance to play at the toughest place in the country and all that. Yeah, I just, you're you're one in forever. Uh, you've won one time up there, but I, I was um, I was interested in who who your home and homes were against, and like I, I thought it was, you know, interesting that you know that there's some that made sense um, mm-hmm. with you know the, the the Baylor TCU Oklahoma State trio makes a ton of sense. I think that that will continue really as you as you go forward. Right. The the Texas one is just going to be a one one off deal. You're mm-hmm. you're going to do that for one more year, and then the Central Florida uh, that was the addition that I maybe I wasn't like okay interesting you know because you could have said you know it could have been Iowa State or one of the Kansas schools or or whatever or or Provo you know going up to Utah and I yeah. I would have been like okay but the Central Florida thing I thought was strange. And 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 it was strange because you're not you're not doing a home and home with Houston, which also would be regional and right and and, and all that. So I, I'd be willing to bet that the Houston home and home becomes, uh, I guess, a thing starting next year permanently because that just makes too much sense from a regional standpoint. But maybe I'm wrong. We'll see, and we'll see who's still in the league and you know who's uh, who, who's added to it, if anybody, by that mm-hmm. point, if if that if it something were to happen that quickly, so. Uh, but that's that's what I noticed. I, I think that most of your, you know, you, you, you your road trips, you know, obviously Orlando, there's one to Morgantown, there's one to Ames. But the bulk of your road trips are regional and short, and they're they're at places that your fans can get to. You're still going to go to Norman, right. Stillwater, Austin, Fort Worth, Waco, and then obviously uh, Houston. And so uh, I, I think that that part was interesting because as we've seen tech fans really respond or I have in, in recent years about being able to get to these road games if they're on a Saturday or, yeah or whatever. And so that's what, that's what else I noticed. But yeah, the, the first thing was no trips to the state of Kansas, which I don't know what I was expecting, but yeah, that one sticks out to me. Yeah, definitely 
like that one if you're just trying to, you know, get as many wins as possible because historically haven't been that good there. But uh, overall, I, I, I liked what you saw there. I thought not necessarily favorable, but it definitely isn't one that it feels like you got it stuck to you where where you could have uh, in terms of uh, some of those tougher road trips and and uh, home games. Um, let's see if we covered. Yeah, we've covered most of it. So let's go ahead and get some questions level. And I will uh, say, I will say too, with with basketball, Joe Toussaint and Devin Cambridge. You've seen them on, uh-huh. on some of the social media activity. They are here and practicing. So I uh, wanted okay. to make for anybody that was curious there. Your full team is is you know practicing and getting them down the floor. They were also at both of those TBT games as well. Which I, you know, again, that's just it's just fun to kind of merge the the past with the present and kind of try to get on the same page and start rowing the the same direction with everything. Yeah. Um. Here's a uh, let's go to football because we got a few football questions. Actually, four different football questions uh, from the audience today. We'll start off with well, Derek. Save save them if we if we go long here. Yeah. Okay. Tendency we, to be long winded. Yeah. If we run a little long, we'll, yeah. we'll we'll hold on to a couple. Derek asks. If you could only afford to take your family to one football game this year, which would you choose and why? Home game? Is that what he said? I, I'd give both answers. Okay. Okay. Because he didn't that, specify. So that, that changes it. It um, does. I, but but a little bit. Um, I uh, I thought this was a wonderful question. I kind of took it as I guess I thought I read home schedule, like which home game would you go to? But um, so I'll answer it that way first, and I'll okay. just kind of overall because I, I, there, there's really only two contenders there for me for home game, yeah, that I think stand out above the others for different mm-hmm. reasons. Um, and then I, I would add a third entry in if we're just talking entire schedule, yeah, uh, you know, in, in, into the equation. Do you have any idea what I'm going to go with, Woodman? Well, I think the, the obvious one at home has got to be Oregon. That's, I mean, that's got to be one of them, right. Okay, I mean, that's that, one that's, of the two. The other one, if I was picking another one at home, it may be different than yours, but it's that Thursday night TCU game. Yeah, it would be different than mine. Okay. I would uh I, I think you could make a case for that one. I yeah. would list that probably third. Um I, I think the the Oregon game, look, it's a non conference game. It right. doesn't matter in the conference standings. It does matter nationally, it does matter perception wise. Mm-hmm. It is the home opener. This is a big time non-conference game, one of which you don't get at home uh, often at all. No. And so that part, I, I'm extremely intrigued by. There's a lot on that game, even though at the end of the day, it doesn't just mean everything, okay? But like right. I said, there's different reasons why why it's very meaningful. So that that is one uh, that I I would put. The other one is the other purple team, and here's why. Okay, that was the other one for me too. Yeah, yeah K- Kansas State. I, I think this is maybe your most important home game, just because you can't beat these guys, you know. And and it's their league right now. Sure. sure. You know, it is their league. I think they have maybe the best coach in the league. I think uh, you know everybody talks about. You know, TCU season last year, TCU didn't win the Big 12. Kansas mm-hmm. State did. And Kansas did State is picked by many to do it again this year. And, you know, and and, and here's why Why else I, I kind of look at it. Like, you look at certain matchups within games. What has Joey told you that is maybe the best thing on his team this year? And he said it repeatedly, really. And I think it's gotten people to go, huh. Okay, I, and then well, I've heard him going, speak very highly about offensive line, but I don't know. Well, if that's and and that. and defensive line, defensive line, defensive yeah, the trenches line are being where... better than last year. Yeah. Well, yeah. Kansas State's got all five starters back on the offensive line, and so <clears throat> I just, I mean, the Kansas State game is essentially what got Matt Wells fired. Um, you, you know, there, there's been so many times over the years where you just have had them beat, and then you 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 don't, you can't. They have is your it... number. 12 for 13, I think they've won. Well, it's 12 ugly. out of 13. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really ugly. ugly. And yeah. the funny thing about the Matt Wells thing, that you know, I mean, you just look at the landscape of the Big 12 and where it sits now. It, it's the game that got him fired, but it's also the game that got Chris Kleiman kind of boosted. Because remember, going into that game, he was 
he was kind of saying, "Hey, media, hot, hot seat ish." Yeah, like, he's like, oh, "Hey, we're media, kind of getting frustrated a little bit." Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that, he was kind of. <laughs> it was his first year in the Big Twelve, and some and... of the some of the media were kind of irritated with it. And I don't yeah. want to say it's not the it's the game that got Matt let go. It's it's the it was no. the final straw. Yeah, but you the... get what I'm saying. And you had him dead to rights. Uh, you know, I think 14 and nothing. Yeah. Well, you were 14 and a half. It was 14 nothing in the first five minutes of that game. Remember? Yeah, you you yeah. get, I mean, you were up so fast. And it's like, all right, fast start. And then you end up losing it late, like you have so many times. Yeah. Cause to me, you know, Joey's got the goal and his team has the goal of winning the Big 12. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't envision a scenario to where you win this league this year if you don't win that game against Kansas State. Just I think that's because a fair I expect statement. them I expect them to be really good again. Mm-hmm. Uh I think that they've got to replace Deuce Vaughn and they've they've got the newcomer of the year, the, the running back from Florida State that is going to step right in. Uh they they do have to replace some key guys on defense, but they, they should be really good. And they're just so always so fundamental. So those two for home games, I think I think you just have a really good home schedule because you could absolutely make a case for the national, you know, runner up last year at TCU on a Thursday night is is as much of a doozy in perception as the others. But for the for other reasons, if you ask me this question overall, boy, I nothing could be on the line. Okay, mm-hmm. but I'd have a hard time not spending my money and going to Austin the Friday after Thanksgiving just because one. It's not going to happen again anytime soon, I don't think. Mm -hmm. And so, and then two, it can mean everything. You know, it can mean everything uh, Mm -hmm. for you. Uh, Punching your ticket to Arlington, winning the league, uh, or or, or playing it, winning the right to play for a chance to to win the league. Um, You know, you could be in the in this basically national, you know, college football playoff race, and that's the last one. And so, for all those reasons, I probably would say that one just because it's uh it's the last of I think long, fair. yeah so th- those are that's how i would uh that's how i would rank them all right uh nick in portland asks this about the uh there was an announcement this week of what double t was going to be at midfield as they continue to uh do some work on the on the stadium leading up to the season nick in portland says uh, why did Tech not use this opportunity with a new coach, new stadium, and field to update the Double T logo? Any rumors about updated uniforms this year? Seems like a good time to turn a new leaf. Yeah, I, I know uh, that's the beauty of college athletics and college sports is that people are so passionate about various things, mm-hmm. uniforms, logos at midfield, yeah, uh, double, double T scoreboards, things that have nothing to do with the actual game and the sure. outcome. Uh I, I I'm not surprised they went with the 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 3D uh, the double T or however you want to phrase that. This is what is on every other stadium. Uh, this is the official school mark or the official school logo. If you go look it up, uh, you know it's 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 the you know it's what's uh, everywhere else. It's what's on the, the court at uh, United Supermarkets Arena. It's I think it's prominently displayed at the Walker Complex and Dan Law, and, and away it goes. The only way, the only place I've really seen it, that logo like prominently displayed. That you know, obviously we have the double T scoreboard, or we did, and I think they'll, they'll make that old school retro. We you know whatever. It, it, there, there's a flat double T uh, on the wall in the Womble. Okay, yeah. so there is that, but everywhere else, it's it's really the. I guess the, the the Womble also has the flat double T on the men's court, right? I think it may. The, I just yeah. know up on the wall. There's the, but okay. yeah, I, I think it may. So, I you know I, I I get it. I think it's fun that people are are so uh, passionate about this subject. Um, but it wasn't surprised at the selection just because that that's sure. kind of not not to say status quo, but that's kind of the way everything else is, and not that you can be different. Uh, because if you're really going to go retro, I could make the argument you you have the one logo with the flat double T with the horse in the front, kind of reared up, and that would be that awesome. would have been a fun yeah. one. But yeah. I think it's about branding. I think you want to you know people to like tune in and see you know exactly. And this is the logo you have on your helmet more often than not. Hey, look, man, I I was rooting for the old double T like many. I yep. love the throwbacks. I think there is nothing cooler looking. Uh, I love it when tech basketball and baseball and football do the whole throwback thing. It's freaking awesome. 
Uh, but you know, I'm sure there's there's much more to it than than that uh, on putting it at midfield. So sure. I was almost wondering, and you can't really do this because they sew these bad boys in. Mm-hmm. I wish the technology was in place to where allowed <laughs> you to kind of yeah interchange it. You know, and that like would be maybe, cool. If you're playing having a throwback day, you could like because used to on the old AstroTurf, like old old, uh-huh. they they zipped the end zones in, like literally zipped it in uh-huh. and unzipped it. And but that was that brutal, oh horrible, like carpet nasty turf that would just it's like burn. you're getting tagged on concrete. Yeah. Oh yes, yes. Uh, but I don't. Yeah, you know, I think you're. Any... I think you're coming up with a uh, new invention. You need to get a patent or something for that to, to to replace logos at midfield. I bet you could make some money off that level. There'd be a lot of schools that would like to do that for individual games. Because that no, game. those uh, the turf. It's legitimately sewn into the turf. It is yeah. a part of the turf. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can't just unsew portions of it, I don't think. I mean, they're just, you know, so anyway, if there was a way to do it, I don't know how they would attach it because uh, there's so much going on beneath the surface there with sand and rubber and all kinds of shenanigans going on. But anyway, that's uh, that was my wish, I guess. But yeah, I was rooting for the I'm not a big uh, level the bevel campaign guy like a lot of people are, but I do love me some uh, old school yeah. double T. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I'm I'm in the same boat as you. I love both. I probably lean towards the old school double T, but it's not, you know, pull my hair out type of stuff. If, if they keep using the the yeah. beveled double T let's throw in one more. And you, you, you got one displayed on your, on your chest right there. That's right. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I, it's not too bad. I, I I'm okay with them all because this was kind of my. I know a lot. The old school was a lot of people's childhood or or growing up or going to school. The the flat double T was, but I mean when I went to school or when I was growing up watching, and this came around with Mike Leach pretty well, and mm-hmm. I started football pretty well watching from 2000 on, and that yeah I remember. Well, and I remember was, they the university they they paid some third party like a consulting firm to kind of mm-hmm. i remember this, that was controversial they're like they paid how i don't know if it was like 25 <laughs> well, or fifty thousand dollars or something yeah yeah they paid they paid some consulting firm to kind of come up with this so they could like i don't know take their brand into the big 12 and kind of you know try to expand it and kind of tweak it or whatever and that's what uh that's what was come up with so anyway it's pretty fascinating so I'll throw in one more question we got this one on the uh end of the bench you can check it out weekdays 100.7 the score at nine to noon that's that's the, what they call a shameless plug um is this going to take me a long time to answer no no i don't minutes. think so i think you can okay. squeeze this one in but if you if you wanted to replace any single game on the schedule level um any big 12 game with a big 12 team you're not playing so you got four teams you're not playing this coming season what game would you replace So, you're so yeah, because you're, you're you're not you're you're talking about football, right? Fo- football. You're not playing. Yeah, because you're not you're not playing Cincinnati, Iowa State, and the two Oklahoma schools. Correct. I I did not understand uh, at all. It made no sense to me, short term, long term, mm-hmm. at all, that you're not playing Oklahoma State. Agreed. That's the one. That's the one that I would have added onto your schedule. Uh, I, I think you could take your pick on who you would have taken off. I mean, I you could have taken off uh, maybe one of the. The, the newbies like Houston or BYU or something. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't want to wouldn't want to have trade with the the Baylor's TCU's the uh, Kansas State's and, and maybe you could have swapped West Virginia. I wouldn't have mind not not having to gone to to Morgantown sure. uh, this year, but I would have definitely had Oklahoma State on there. And you know, it's I, I think uh, I think they they could be sneaky good. I think people have uh, dismissed them, but I think Mike Gundy's got as much of a track record as anybody in the country as far as like consistency 17 straight years of seven wins or more and and all that but the alan bowman connection i I just kind of yeah and i and i got to see him back uh when the red raiders were there for basketball back in uh earlier this year i guess it would be and anyway but it's it's weird because like emmett jones goes to oklahoma alan bowman goes to oklahoma state you'll never see or play against these guys ever again Uh, not unless I guess it's in Arlington and you're matched up against one of them in a Big 12 championship game scenario. But yeah, that's the one that I definitely would have added. And I don't understand why they didn't. That that's too regional for me to to have agree. that not on there. That because that that one has a chance to be 
you know, I hesitate to say rivalry, but a, but a game that's meaningful for you for, you know, several years. If you're talking about just brands in the Big 12 moving forward beyond Texas and Oklahoma, those should be two of your leading candidates. And yeah. you know, Oklahoma State and Texas Tech, partially longevity, but just, I mean, viewership, all, all sorts of things, alumni bases. So it, it I, that, that's the one that puzzled me the most as well. And, yeah, I, I mean, you could take, take your pick on who you want to knock out there. Probably Houston for me. <laughs> so I mean, if you hadn't played them so much recently, I wouldn't have mind playing Hugh. I, I just the, the trips to Morgantown wear me out, man. It's a long ways. Yeah, but it is interesting the Allen Bowman thing. Just like you're talking about, I mean, you're going to have the Houston connection with the Donovan Smith this year. So there's there's connections all over the league that uh, it'll make football season interesting and fun. Level creeping on football season, getting closer and closer. But, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm ready for you know, but we'll we'll uh we'll we'll keep kind of steadily dropping these on, on yep. you as we get close to I think fall camp starts August the fourth. I think mm-hmm. there's a media day type event on August the third, and uh, and away we go. There we go, Lovell. Appreciate it, man. Absolutely appreciate you, man. Thanks, Woodman. That's Chris Lovell. I'm Choice Woodman. You've been tuned in to the Ask Level Podcast, brought to you by Double T 97. You've been listening to the Ask Level Podcast, powered by Double T 97.3.